Hello and welcome to 101 Ideas for Minecraft Learners. In this Valentine's special, I thought I'd make a heart-shaped world, or at least make a heart that's shaped in the world. <laughs> so what we're going to be doing, I'm going to be using a, a couple of different programs that you might not have used before, um, and they're really, really interesting, really amazing programs, and they're going to allow us to take 3D objects uh, from different uh, programs and voxelize them, turn them into kind of cubified shapes, and then make them into a schematic, and then using MC Edit, take that schematic and put them in a Minecraft world. You're going to need to download SketchUp, and SketchUp is an amazing 3D sort of designing program, very, very easy to use, very, very amazing. You can make amazing 3D objects in it, uh, and uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be actually downloading some objects and using SketchUp to export these objects for us uh, as an OBJ file. So, first of all, you're going to need to, if you haven't already, download SketchUp. Once you've downloaded SketchUp, you can go to 3D Warehouse, and we're going to search for a heart and press return. Um, oh, there's a heart, I'll click on that. So this is the heart that uh, I'm interested in downloading and turning into a voxel shape. Uh, so you can just go down, download, uh, or download a SketchUp model like that. Once we open it up in SketchUp, we can have a little look around our heart and we can see it's all lovely in 3D and so someone's done an excellent job at making this. And once we've got it into SketchUp, we can export this as an OBJ file. So go up to File, and down to export and we want to export as a 3D model and we'll call it heart I've already download, uh, exported one already I'm going to put heart 2 make sure OBJ J file is selected down here there's a whole variety of different ones that you can have but we uh, I find it's easier to do an OBJ file and press export the final program that we're going to be looking at um, is something called binvox and you can download Binvox uh, from the Minecraft Gamerpedia, uh, and I'll leave all the links in the description below. And that's down here, and it says Binvox is a command line program that turns 3D files into Binvox building flat plan files or into schematic files for importing with MC Edit, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, so a Binvox output file can then be viewed and interacted with Viewvox. You don't need Viewvox, and I won't actually be using it in this tutorial. And the process of converting a set of 3D polygons to their equivalents blocks is called voxelization, and that's what we're going to be doing today. And uh, you can see we've got a download, so there's a Windows download here, and there's also um, there's the Mac one down here. There's a Binvox and Viewvox down there. So you're going to need to just download Binvox. And that downloads our Binbox file down here. Fantastic. Also, if you haven't actually downloaded MC Edit, make sure you download MC Edit because we're going to need that as well. Go to mcedit.net and you can download it for Windows, Apple, or Linux. As it was already stated, Binbox is a, an, a command line program. Okay, so it, uh, what we need it to do is we need to use Terminal uh, for on a Mac and a command line tool on a PC. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using Terminal on the Mac, and if anybody's really interested or really desperate, I will do a PC version as well. So first things first, we need to open up Terminal. On a Mac, you can just go uh, Command Space and type in Terminal in the search, and that opens up a new Terminal window. So here's our Terminal window. Now the first thing you're going to need to do if you've just downloaded Binbox is, unfortunately, Binbox starts its life out, uh, it, it looks like this, it looks like a document, and, and if we put Command I and get information, we can see that uh, it believes that it is a document, a kind document, and if we try and use that within a terminal window, it will horribly fail and we'll not be able to use it. We're going to have to change this document into a Unix um, executable file. So let's have a look at one I've already got here and do command I and we can kind of see the difference between the two. We can see that's an executable file, it kind of looks like a kind of computer window and this looks like a, uh, a document. And we can see the kind up there, Unix executable file. So how do we turn a, a document into well, this one? Because they are actually the same thing. How do we turn this into uh, an executable file? Well, in actual fact, is we're going to have to use Terminal straight away. Um, so, and I've got some instructions here, and I'll be posting these instructions again in the description below. So do do take a look at the description, uh, and you'll be able to follow them, copy them, paste them for yourself. 
So it says here, open terminal, and then type in this code, chmod, and then a space, and then a plus, and a cross, which means change this into an executable file. Uh, with a space at the end, did not press space that. So let's do that. So let's go down into terminal here, uh, type in chmod, okay, space, and then we want to put plus, and then an x, and then a space. Once we've done that, we can then go over here and drag this file from here all the way into um, our terminal window. Bring the terminal window back up to the front and press return. And it immediately turns that document into uh, a, an executable file. So that's brilliant. If we go back to our programs and editors page and we scroll a little bit more down past the download, past the file formats, into the bimvox commands. And here we can see we've got current options for bimvox uh, and this is the usage. This is how we're going to use the command line tools. So we've got things like dash d and dash d stands for specify voxel. So this gives you kind of a, a, a list of instructions uh, that will give you information about how we're going to use them within our terminal or a command line tool. So uh, do have a little read about them but you can read on here but if you haven't got the internet available to you you can also and this is what I generally do take bimvox drag it into uh, your terminal window and press return. It immediately, let's just drag this down here, gives an error message. So it says error missing model file name, and that's fine. It also gives all this usage about how, and it gives the instructions that you find in the website. Let me show you an example of how you would get a schematic uh, using the bimvox commands. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is drag bimvox into your terminal window. Once it's there, we can think about what kind of things do we need to do. Well, I would like my heart to be hollow. So let's see if there's something in here that says make it hollow, make it hollow. Aha, here we go. So dash ri removes internal voxels. So let's put after this dash ri and then a space. Now, what else do I need to do? Oh, let's do down, down sample it. So let's make it a little bit smaller. So dash down and then another space. Okay. Now, I want this to be a schematic. So that is up here. Up here it says specify voxel type, either a, a, a hips, a myra, a vector, a raw, or a schematic. So this is how we do this. We want it to be a schematic. So we put dash T space, and then we write the word schematic. Uh, so that's, uh, and I always spell this wrong, so let's just make sure I don't scheme. Attic. Okay, great and then space again. And then once we've done all that, so this one removes the internal, uh, internal voxels, it downsamples it by, uh, by two in the, all, the, all its dimensions, and it will export it as a schematic within the file that we've got here. And that's why I've left these uh, in their own folder. So let's grab the heart object and drag that into here. And then that is it. And then all we do is we press return. And then if we're lucky, fingers crossed, it will do, it will scan that heart uh, in, in all its three dimensions, vertically, sideways, X, Y, and Z, and it will turn it into um, a voxel shape, okay? And then we can use that voxel shape in MC Edit. So there we go, it's done it, fantastic. So it's right, written the, the voxel file, and if we look in our binbox folder here, we now have the heart.schematic like that. So I'm going to put my heart schematic into my MC edit schematic folder and that's into, let's just uh, copy it and go to, into my documents and there's my schematics folder there and I can just uh, paste that in. So here's a world I created earlier, just a nice uh, redstone world and I'm going to go down here to import and I'm going to go right down to the bottom and I think it's going to be heart, let's have a look, heart 2 open and there it is on its side fantastic and you can see it's stone now I need to uh, raise this up so let's rotate it fantastic and roll it and roll it oh, rotate it roll it 
Roll it, roll it. Is it up, up right now? Let's have a little look. Yeah, that looks um, that looks upright. Okay, and once I'm happy with uh, <laughs> with its orientation, I can press import and I'll import the whole thing. Let's save that. And just deselect. So there's our heart in Minecraft. And what we can do is we can actually convert this heart uh, into uh, lots of different colors if you want to. So you can kind of reselect it. And then do something like uh, fill and replace. So let's fill and replace. Let's do, we're going to find stone and we're going to replace with, now if I want to replace it with um, one of the new blocks, so say maybe uh, kind of uh, one of the clay blocks, we can go to uh, Minecraft ID list and we need the ID list, so we w we're looking for for our ah, clay. Let's have uh, some stained clay. So we'll do red stained clay here. So this one here, we can see that it's got an MCID of 159 uh, colon 14. So if I go into MC edit and I say 149 colon, what was it again? 14. Oh, 159, 159. There we go. It says it's a future block. So although MC Edit doesn't really know that it's red clay yet, uh, because it's not a new version of MC Edit, it recognizes that uh, there will be future blocks and we can actually use them. So it, it'll just go, well, whatever you want, <laughs> I'm going to do it. So we'll press OK. And I'm going to replace, look for fine stone and replace with a future block and replace. And there we go. We'll save it and we'll go into Minecraft and have a look at it. So this is the 3D object that we've just taken from Google 3D Warehouse. We've voxelized using Bimbox and we've imported it into a Minecraft world. So let's um, let's go inside it and have a look. So these are one of the, the ventricles. So we'll just break some of this open and we'll fly in. I'll just drink some night, night potion so we can actually see inside of it. There's some bats already. There's some, uh, there might be some zombies as well. <laughs> there might be some zombies. Well, hopefully not. I'm on peaceful, I think. But here we are inside the human heart, or at least a representation of it anyway. So I hope... Uh, let's break out. So obviously you can do this with other objects, not just uh, a human heart, but any kind of 3D object that you find on the internet, whether it be an OBJ file, like dinosaurs. Or, like dinosaurs, yeah, absolutely. Like I've done it with Godzilla, we've done it with lots of different things, you can do it with cars, all sorts of things. You can make and represent objects in three-dimensional space very easily. You can even use uh, SketchUp to create your own objects uh, and create them in 3D and then export them and, and re-import them, if you like, into Minecraft itself. So it's a really, really powerful tool to start visualizing three-dimensional things and then using Minecraft as a, as a form of engagement to, um, to just explore them. So this is great, I mean, for biology and for kind of other bits and pieces you might want to use, this is a great kind of way of uh, engaging and very quickly uh, creating stunning builds uh, from Minecraft. I hope you've enjoyed that uh, tutorial. If you have any questions or uh, any ideas or stuff like that, do leave them in the comments below. And if you could subscribe and like as well, that would really help the channel. So thanks very much and have a lovely Valentine's Day. Bye-bye. Yeah.